Maria whirls a ball on a string. So here's Maria, and uh, she's whirling this ball around her head on a string. A tension force in the string keeps it moving in a circular path. So the tension force in the string is actually a pull force, and it's pull force, and we can label it as a centripetal force. Centripetal force because it's keeping this ball accelerating with a centripetal acceleration towards the center of the rotation. So it's keeping the ball in the circular path. Now, what three changes could Maria make that would increase the tension in the string? So that means increase the centripetal force. What are the changes we could make? Let's take a look at this. So, to increase the tension, I'll say that's a pull force in the string. To increase the tension or pull force in the string, and I'll just say which is the centripetal force. Centripetal force for the ball's circular motion. We could now, there are three things we could do. Two of them are intuitive and it feels right. And the last one is not so obvious. So let's just look at the first two. First of all, let's replace that ball with something much more massive. Maybe a lump of concrete or a lump of lead. What do you think would happen to the tension needed in the string to keep it going in the same circle? Well, it's going to have to be a, a lot more tension. You're going to have to pull on that on that uh, string a lot harder to keep it moving in a circle. And so if we increase the object's mass, in this case the ball, the object's mass, that will increase the centripetal force necessary to keep it in the same circle. The second thing we could do is we could whirl it around our head much faster. So we could increase the speed of the object. A faster speed means it goes around more times per second. And that means that it needs a higher force, a higher tension in the string, in other words, a larger centripetal force, to keep it in that circle, to keep it in that circular path. And here's a, another example of that. Let's say you're going around a corner in a car. If you go around a corner too fast, then you'll skid. There won't be enough friction between the tires and the road to keep you in that circular path. So the faster you go, the more centripetal force you need to keep you going in that circle. And lastly, number three, we could decrease the radius of the circle. So this means that we're going to spin this ball in smaller circles, but at the same speed, keeping everything else the same. It would appear to be going around faster, uh, more times per second, more revolutions per second, but it, it could have the same speed. So this is not such an obvious one. By decreasing the radius of the circle, that will need a higher centripetal force to keep it in that smaller circle. So three ways of increasing the centripetal force. And this is really to get you understanding the, the three factors that affect the centripetal force needed to make an object go round in a circle.
we could alter its mass, we could change the speed of the object, or we could make it move around in smaller or larger circles.